and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. On a beautiful spring day here in the UK, it's by far the hottest day we've had for months, so it's really very pleasant. But we are going to do Sudoku, and, and for all the cat lovers out there, we've got Glum Hippo's uh, Astral Cat TM for you today. Um, and a very unusual rule set for us to get our claws into. Uh, I'll tell you about that in a moment. A few things to mention. Firstly, if you own our Thermo Sudoku app, make sure it's up to date because we have just launched a big update of that. Loads and loads of new puzzles um, that I hope you enjoy mightily. Um, now, on Sunday on the channel, we released Jovial's video on how to construct a Sudoku masterpiece. I have been absolutely thrilled with the comments that video has been receiving and the feedback generally. It really is terrific. Um, and I'm, I'll try and remember to put a card on the screen there. If you've not seen the video, do check it out. But also, I have been contacted by two or three other setters now, all keen um, to showcase their skills in the setting arena. So I'm hoping that this will be the start of something of a series of of constructors showing how they make these brilliant brilliant puzzles and that's very exciting um, over on patreon we've got my um, my classic sudoku hack as i'm calling it so uh, this is a puzzle mark did on the channel the other day by thomas snyder um, and i i'd already had a look at it and i'd found a very different way through it to mark so if you want to see a bit of different logic on how to solve hard classics i definitely commend that to you and also uh yeah, it's only a couple of days away. The start of April is nearly upon us. And at the start of April, we are going to release Demono's sequel to Everything is Rogan. Now, if you don't remember Everything is Rogan, I don't believe you because it haunts you, this puzzle, once you try it. This is it. Um, a, clue, uh, a Sudoku in which every single given clue there is a lie. Um, <laughs> not easy to solve. Um, anyway, that puzzle has a sequel. And that is the puzzle we're going to release at the start of April for everybody supporting the channel on Patreon. And isn't it absolutely sensational uh, that in this day and age, a puzzle's sequel can be anticipated? I love that. I love the fact that, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing the reaction to a puzzle's sequel, not a film sequel, a puzzle sequel. That is very gratifying. Um, also, by the way, on Patreon soon, we're going to release Mark's latest battle with the Times uh, Club Monthly Special, which is a viciously brutal <laughs> cryptic crossword. So that's always worth a look if you like our crossword content. Now, that all said, let us get on with uh, the rules of Glum Hippo's puzzle. I shall read them to you. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Um, the reddish kitty on the left is made of two German whispers lines. Each, i.e. each successive pair of digits on a line must be at least five apart. Um, so if you've never seen German whispers before, it's a very unusual constraint. So let's imagine this square was um, three, for example. This square now has to be at least five away from three. So it has to be eight or nine. So let's say that was eight. Oops. If that's eight, this now has to be five away from eight. So you can see that would only have the options of one and two because it can't be three anymore because there's already a three in the box. Um, so that's how German whispers rules work. Uh, now the hazy gray kitty on the right, red kitty's astral projection, TM, uh, is made of two palindrome lines, um, i.e. they read the same backwards as forwards. So we've looked at palindromes a bit recently. Um, so I guess that means that starting at the kitty's ear up here, I mean, if this was one, two, three, then from the tail of the astral projection, we would have to go one, two, three to ensure that as we read the palindrome this way, we go one, two, three. And as we read it the other way, we go one, two, three. So if the next digit was six, that would have to be six and etc etc that's how palindromes work very straightforward there's one more rule which is that the circle digits are quadruples meaning that the four cells surrounding the circle must contain the given digit or digits at least once um, so that's fairly straightforward hopefully that means in those in that two by two there you have to put the digits four six and seven they would have to appear in those four squares at least once. Um, and that's all there is to it. So do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as always. Now I get to play. Let's get 
cracking. Um, now, let's get cracking. What shall we do first? There's a few things we could think about here. Um, so in fact, the first thing I've noticed is nines are in alignment. Look, we have an alignment of nines. So we know there's a nine in this two by two, and we know there's a nine in that two by two. So there is no nine in those six cells, but we need to put a nine in column four somewhere. So that nine must be down at the bottom there. So I think firstly, I'm just gonna check the quadruples and see whether we've got anything anything interesting, which I'm not actually seeing. I don't think that was profitable at all. Um, okay, so now we've got a choice. We can either look at the palindrome or the German whispers line. Uh, palindrome, let me just count the length of the palindrome. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Right, so this palindrome has a center. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine here. So this is the only cell on the on the astral projection cat that does not have a friend. And by that, I mean, um, we know that this square therefore, and this square, these have to be the same digit in order to ensure that the palindrome is correct. And that does give us an opportunity to color the whole of this cat. And you know what I feel about coloring, but, on the other hand, I do also like colouring German Whispers cats as well. And maybe that's more sensible. I think I will... I think I'll start with colouring the German Whispers cat because parity is hugely important in German Whispers, on German Whispers lines. What do I mean by parity? Well, if this square is a high digit, the next square on the line has to be low. So what, when by using high, I mean, if this is a six, seven, eight, or nine, the next square has to be a one, two, three, four, etc., etc., along the line. So what we can do here is, we don't know whether this is high or low, but we do know it's the same parity as that, which is the same parity as that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that, and that, nori nori. Um, all of those are the same. They're either all high or all low. And that means the other ones, let's try not to miss any of them, all of those are all the other. So if purple is high, green is low, and vice versa. Um, now, ah, okay. One thing we can think about with German whispers lines as well is fives. You can never put a five on a German whispers line because if you do, what's the next square going to be? It has to be five different. So it's either going to be 10, that's not a good choice, or zero, also not a good choice. So five in this two by two is locked into one of two places. No, no German whispers line near this five. Even on, even on the palindrome equivalents, look, there's no German whispers lines close enough to it. There is a German whispers line here. Right, so this in this two by two, the five has to be at the bottom of the grid, look. Five. So five is now in just two places in box seven, because it can't go on the German whispers line. It can't go there or there by Sudoku. So it's in one of two places. Um, and what next we can we haven't actually learnt very much at all about well that's this this domino is a bit interesting because that shares palindrome and german whispers line one two three four five six one two three four five six so those dominoes ah yeah okay right here we go here we go here's some logic these dominoes contain the same digits but well let's ask the question we know that this foursome contains one two and eight as three of its digits is it possible that this domino has one two and eight in this in these two squares well the answer is no because if if these two squares are made up of the digits one two and eight in some combination those two squares would be one two and eight in some combination and these two squares would have to contain four, six, and seven to make this clue correct. Well, that won't work. 
So immediately we can say that those two squares have to be 1, 2, and 8. And one of these squares is 1, 2, and 8, and the other must be 4, 6, and 7, and vice versa. So those squares are 4, 6, and 7. And that's on the German whispers line, but it contains ah, close, isn't it? You see, if we could get this to be high or low, we would know all of the parity of the line, but we don't quite know it. Um, right, let's label these up. One, two, four, six, seven, eight. Good lift levels of no of, <laughs> of pencil marking here. Um, Okay, well, there's, there's some simple things I can see here. You can't ever put, you can't put four in either of those two squares because they're on German whispers lines. So the next digit would have to be a nine and it can't be a nine in any of those three positions. So there's no four in those squares. Um, so there's no four in those squares. Um, now, okay, more, you can't put six here. I was about to say you can't put six here because you can't put ones in both of those squares, forgetting that the gray line is not the German whispers line, but actually it's okay, look, because if you do try and put six here, you have to put one here, that's on the German whispers line, and you have to put one here because the German whispers line bends down and you'd have two ones in those squares, which is impossible. So I... I can definitely avoid, uh, um, remove six from that one and therefore from that one. And uh, what does that mean? So that means um, if that's a six, that could be a one, and then that's free to be high. I'm not sure. Um, uh, if green is high, you'd have a one two pair here. And this would have to be a three. Ah, yeah, hang on. If green is high, this would be a one two pair because both purples would have to be low. This would have to be low and therefore would have to be a three or a four. And that would force 267 to be in this little L triomino here. So maybe this square, is that square restricted? Purple, yeah, that's quite interesting. This square here cannot be a two, because if you put, oopsie, if you put two here, oh gosh, what's going on? If that's a two, these two squares have to both be of the same parity. And look at the options. The only options are one and two. So you definitely get a repeated digit in that, in that threesome there. So that's not two. Right, I'm going to check six and seven. Um, if this, oh, six I can rule out straight away. Six, you can't put six in the middle of a run of three on a German whispers line because the other two squares would both have to be one. So six doesn't work. Seven makes this high parity. So that would have to be eight, that would have to be six. Oh, it's beautiful, right, that breaks as well. Because if this is seven, because these, because, well, really it's because this is eight, this is what causes the magic to happen. This being eight forces this square in effect to be green because it's got to have low parity now. And look, these three squares have all got to be selected. This can only be one or two because it's next to a seven. One, two, one, two, one, two. You can't put three, three, one, twos in the same row. So this is not seven. And that means this is a two, six, seven triple. Ah, no. And I was about to say we might get the parity, but we still don't. We still have a, a low option in this square. Um... Ah, can I get rid of this two somehow? If that's a two, this would be one, three or four, but providing it's not 
one, that would be okay. This would be three or four, and that would work. Bobbins, right, sorry. Um, this does feel like it's close to mattering, though, doesn't it? Maybe a better question is, what can this be? It definitely can't be 2, 6, 7. I can see it can't be 5. It can't be 4, because then you'd have to put two nines along the German Whispers line. So this doesn't have as many options as we might think. It's 1, 3, 8, or 9, isn't it? Let me just double check that. So it can't be 2, 4, 5, 6, or 7. 1, 3, 8, or 9. And it's purple. So it's not 1. Yeah, OK, it's not 1, because that gives us the 1, 2 problem in the triple again. If this is 1, all of purple is low, and these squares would have to be a double 2. That doesn't work. Um, oh, it, it can't be 3. It can't be 3, and we've got the parity. Yes, OK, it can't be 3, because this square cannot be an 8 or a 9. So now, purple is high. Oh, look, and purple is high, so that square is 8. It can't be 1 or 2. That means that squares. This square is 9. This square is high, but it's... Oh, OK, not quite. We don't quite know that one. 6 or 7. Um, this square is low. OK, so that's 7. So we've got a 1, 2 pair here. And this square is low because it's green. We now know the parity, so this is 3 or 4. This square is given now, it's a 2, because it's the only low digit it can be. These two squares have to be a 6-7 pair, because we know that we need 6 and 7 in this quadruple. 8, can't go next to 4 on the German Whispers line, that's a 3. And right, now what we're going to do is we are going to go round this German Whispers line and look at the options, because we now know purple is always high. Those two squares have to be high, they can't be 6 and 7. That is an 8-9 pair. This square is 1, 3 or 4. And it can't, it can't be 4, because that would put a 9 either side of it. So that, oops, that's a 1 or a 3. Um, 3, I think, is OK with 8-9 there. So we can't assume anything about this one. Now, this square, that's all. This square can't be what, 2 or 3. That's got to be 1 or 4, and it can't be 4. And it just can't be 4. You'd have to put 9 in two spa bases in box 7, so this is 1. And that means... 1 is the most useless line, or the most useless number on a German Whispers line, because the next square is just any high digit. You can't it's not like this 3, which was really useful. Um, this 6, 7, oh, it can't be 8. So this, ah, this square can't be 9 anymore because we know green is low parity. So this square is 2, 3, or 4. And it's not 4, look, because if this is 4, these two squares both have to be 9, and that's going to break the puzzle. And if it's 3, this would have to be 9, and this would have to be 8. Which looks possible, actually, doesn't it, I think? Um, OK, so let's keep going along the line. This is a high digit, so this is 6, 7, 8, or 9. It's not 6, because... We can't put 1 into both of the positions around it. It's not 9, because I've got pencil mark 9s in there already. So it's not 9, it's 7 or 8. This square, therefore, is... This square can't be 4, because whatever you pick from 7 and 8 is not 5 different. This is 1, 2 or 3. OK, we are whittling away at these numbers. This one, this is a high digit. That looks like it might be able to be 6, 7, 8 or 9. Can that really be 6? That would put double 1 into those squares. Um, maybe it can, actually. 
Maybe that can be six. So if that's six, this square is low. One, two, three, or four. That looks possible. This one is therefore six, seven, eight, or nine. And that also looks possible. Oh dear. Um, okay, so what have we learnt now? Have we have we got this puzzle sorted out or not? I rather fear the answer is no. Um, we've done some good work though, I have to say. We have two. Ah, this little quadruple here contains a two, so there's no two there. Oh, I tell you what I should do now. I should look at my palindrome more carefully because this square is a one or a two and that is the same as that square. So this square now is a one or a two and this square is a six or a seven. Now does that matter? I'm not sure. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my colouring um, and colour my palindrome instead because it's going to be very hard to see how these interact with each other if I don't colour them in. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go grey darker grey, black, then these can be green, these can be purple. Let's try and make sure I follow the palindrome, not the German whispers line. That's going to have to be orange. The next one can be red. The next one, I don't like using yellow, I'll use blue. Okay, so this is, this is our line. Right, okay, well I can see straight away therefore this red here is one or three and that square is a one or a three. Ah, right, okay, and that is rather beautiful because there's no way that square is a one. Why is this square not a one? Well, if it's not a one, where are you going to put the one in this, if this is a one, which one of these are you going to make a one? The answer is neither of them, because if this is a 1, this square can't be a 1, because it's in the same column, but neither can purple be a 1 either, because if this is a 1, that's a 1, and that's purple is seeing this square, so that you can't put a 1 in this 1-2 pair if you make that a 1, and therefore we're not making that a 1, we'll make it a 3. Ah, now that's not... Oh, this is really nice. Right, there's lots going on now. There is lots going on. Now this square is a 2. And that 2 is seeing this 1-2 pair. So that's a 1, that's a 2. Purple is now 1. Uh, don't know if we know about this square being 6 or 7. Not sure, but I saw something else. I saw this three. Once you get um, a three here, this square can't be a seven because it's on the German whispers line. So that's an eight. Oh, that eight died. <laughs> that died a death very quickly. Um, oh, three here means that square's a one. Look, again, the most useless number on a German whispers line. So one is in one of those squares at the top. One is in one of the... Ah, yeah, okay. Where does one go? One doesn't go here because it's, it, would be, it would have to go there where it would see that one. So this is a one. One of those three squares is a one now. One of those two squares is a one. Two's... Two! Where does two go in box seven? By Sudoku, it goes here. Three. It's the same. Three goes here. Five we get from our pencil mark. Five has to be in this domino at the end. Five. Let's go five in one of... Oh, in fact, look at this column. This is a four-five pair at the top of column, column one. So these two squares... 
Oh no, hang on. This is one, six, or seven. That's a bit annoying. Uh, oh, hang on. One, I can just place here. So this is a six or a seven. That's better. Now, now, where do we look next? We've got, we've actually got some action going on here all of a sudden, haven't we? We've got five by Sudoku, look. We've got five locked into um, row one and row two here, and five locked into row one and row two here. So none of those squares are five. So five is in one of these two cells. Oh no, I was about to say, and then I can use the palindrome to get rid of it here. But in fact, that looks quite good for the palindrome because there needs to be a five in there. Um, bobbins. Ah, let's not let's not give up on fives though. We can still do stuff with fives because look at these three squares. There's no five there. If you put five here, it goes via the palindrome to there, which is definitely not right because the five in box two is in one of those squares. If you try a five in the green, that's exactly the same point. You get a five here, which is not in one of these squares. So the five in box six is in one of those six cells. The five in box nine is in one of those two cells. So that means there are no fives anywhere in those six cells, which means the five in column seven has to be in these three squares. And we've already worked out it's got to be actually also in row three. So it's there exactly. So it's not here. Um, oh, <laughs> OK, I'm not sure what that does then. Maybe nothing. Um, this row is getting a bit clustered though, isn't it? Or cluttered. We need two, three, and four to finish it. This square is in a palindrome. Ah, oh, oh, good grief. Right, okay. Now look, this square is in a palindrome square with this square, which sees two and three. So this square cannot be two and three. This is a four. That's a four. This is a four. This is a five. And that, that felt like a really big breakthrough. I'm not sure whether it is or not yet. Two or three have to be here. Whoopsie. Just using the power of this, uh, this palindrome. Which interestingly, look, that palindrome could have been a German whispers line. Um, well, depending on whether this is high, if high enough to cater for a two and a three there, or what, it's actually, it's going to be the same digit there. Um, five is in one of those two cells. I've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in box two. So, so the rest of the digits are five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight is in one of those two squares by Sudoku. So eight is on a palindrome square. It's either here or here. Which means it's not there, I suppose. That is a simple deduction. Um, okay, maybe we don't get much more than that there. We can four look. Oh, yeah, hang on. Four is not there. Now look, we've got four, six, and seven here. So this square must be the four. It's the only place the four can go. Now four is in one of three places there. And oh, this is so, this is just so clever. It really is, because now, can you put four in those two squares? No, because they'd reflect in the palindrome and clash with this four. So actually we get the four. The four has to go there, which means one of these is a four, which means one of those is a four. Three here, sorry, I've just seen that. Three and two go in. Um, that, oh, that three is on the palindrome. Three, ah, yeah, okay. 
there are four threes looking at the central box. Whenever you have four, four of the same digit looking at a box, you can always fill in the digit. That's a three in the corner there. That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Uh, two has got, ah, two. Yes, in fact, where does two go in this box? It's got to go here. That takes six out as a possibility from the German Whispers line and six out from here. It places, yes, it places two in box six because you can't put two there because it would reflect there and clash. So there's a two here. There's a two here by Sudoku, a two here by Sudoku. Uh, okay. Ah, ooh. Now, this little square here is suddenly interesting because look, one, two, three, four in the row. So this square has to be a high digit, which tells us the parity of this German Whispers line. So these two have to be, ah, these two have to be high, so that you can't put four there. So that is not four, the four must go there which means four is in one of those two positions. And that's interesting because now we've got fours and nines penciled into the same squares in box eight. So this square can't be a five. The, fi the five goes here, the one goes here. The five goes here by Sudoku, the eight goes here. Good grief, now I've got eights aligning in boxes. Um, five and six. There's a lot going on in this puzzle now, which means eight's got to be in one of those two squares. This box needs six, seven, and nine. I'm not sure if we can do that. We might be able to do it via the medium of the black square look, because this square goes here. No, okay, that doesn't look like it's resolved. Six, seven, and nine. Um, Okay, let's come back to this because this square is now given, isn't it? That's got to be a one because it's got to be a low digit because we worked out those were high digits. So the German Whispers line tells us the parity of this square, which gives us a one. Have we done? Oh, yeah, we've done loads of ones. Um, oh, hang on. This square is blue and it's a four or a nine. I've got a four nine pair. So this square is a four or a nine via the power of blue. Although the power of blue has let itself down a bit because it's not really, it's not really broken the puzzle open, has it? Um, so maybe I've got to lay, ah, yeah, hang on, look. This square is high and it can't be eight or nine. That's a six or a seven, therefore. That gives us a six, seven pair in the column that tells us this square must be the missing digit, which is five. Therefore, that's a five. By the power of Sudoku, not He-Man or Grayskull, that's five. Uh, that's eight, therefore. Oh, which I could have got ages ago. And I could have got the five ages ago. Sorry, I just missed the palindrome. So that was all a complete um, waste of mental energy. Um, this square is six, seven or nine. This, oh, this is not eight anymore. So, oh yeah, where does eight go in this box? It's, it can only go there. So this square is six, seven or nine as well. It seems to be a lot of that going along. Um, six, seven pair in row four gives us a nine here. No nines go in here. That gives us a six, seven pair. These squares, therefore, are four, eight, and nine. That's got to be a four or an eight. This square's got to be a six or a seven. I, I feel like I've done most of the palindrome now. Maybe that's just wishful thinking. Um, I have done most of the palindrome. I really, I mean, I really have. Seven. Seven has got to appear in one of those four squares. Well, that's quite helpful. This can't be a six then. I've not put a seven around it. That's got to be 
7, that's got to be 6. 7 is on the black square, so that's a 7. That's a 6, that's a 6, that's a 9. Yes, the 6, let's keep going with 6s and 7s by the looks of things. 6 goes here, 7 goes here, 9 goes here, 6 goes here. Uh, no, no, that's still good. That's a 7. I got worried for a moment, but that's still good. 7 goes here. Um, now what do we need? We need 6 and 7 in this, co in this column. That's a 6, therefore. That should be a 7. 7 goes here by Sudoku. Um, this is on the German whisper line, and it's got a 2. So that can't be 6. That's got to be 9. That's a 4, therefore. Therefore, this is a 4 by the power of blue. 8, 9, 8 go in. We still need a 9 in the row, so we can do that. These squares have got to be 5 and 6, which we can do. Good. These squares have got to be 3 and 8, which we well, we can't do. That square's a 9. These squares are 4 and 6, which we can do. And I think we're just tidying up. Uh, 3 and 7 we can do. And the 3 is a very welcome sound because that fills all of those in. There you go. Let's click tick. Yes. <laughs> Fabulous puzzle. Really entertaining. Um, the way that the cat, the red cat, the red kitty, interacted with its astral projection was really very beautiful indeed. The whole logic around this domino and this domino was really cute. And the thing I really liked was this one, two pair and this three, seeing those squares, because that really helped me to break into the puzzle. Um, and what was the other thing I liked later on? It was something to do with the four here. The fact that this had to mirror onto this and saw a two and a three was just beautiful when it happened. So Glum Hippo, as usual, very, very cool puzzle. Let me know in the comments how you got on. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.